He acquires most who requires nothing but commands respect. Erasmus, the education of a Christian prince. Hello, welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Chapter 42 and chapter 43 contain two sets of princely advice that Don Quixote delivers to Sancho before he departs to govern his island at the beginning of chapter 44. Cervantes begins this sequence by acknowledging that the cosmic ride on Clavileño in the previous episode was indeed meant to convey a classical theme, namely political humility. Sancho spells this out when the Duke tells him to prepare to rule his island. After I descended from the heavens and after from those high peaks I gazed upon the earth and found it so tiny, the burning desire I once had in me to be a governor has been tempered because what glory is there in ruling a mustard seed? And what dignity or empire is there in governing over half a dozen men the size of hazelnuts? For it seemed to me that there were no others anywhere on earth. Did you know? In the genre known as princely advice manuals, Machiavelli famously shifted the emphasis from the importance of having Christian humanist ideals to the importance of having diabolical astuteness. Sancho refers again to Cicero's dream of Scipio, a fundamental text for Cervantes throughout his career, and the humor of his final request again involves the Duke in the lesson of humility. If it would please your grace to grant me the smallest part of heaven, even if no more than half a league, I would accept it more willingly than the best isle on earth. There are grave implications here, given that the Spanish Empire now spanned the globe and that Spain had recently attempted to conquer England in 1588. The Duke now focuses on political corruption. First, Sancho insists again that his intentions are pure. And this is not out of any appetite I might have to step out of my hut and compete with my superiors, but rather out of the desire I have to savor what it feels like to be a governor. The Duke, however, anticipating Lord Acton, asserts that power is very tempting. Once you try it, Sancho, you will be licking your fingers to be a governor, for it is a very sweet thing to command and be obeyed. The idea that kings are deluded by their own divinity has ancient origins, and it was popular in Counter-Reformation advice manuals, as well as medieval Spanish authors like Don Juan Manuel and Juan de Mena. The Duke reviews the importance of dressing like a king, echoing the all the world's a stage motif we saw in chapters 11 and 12, as well as the letters and arms debate of chapter 38 of part one. You will go dress partly as an academic and partly as a captain because on the aisle I'm giving you, arms are as necessary as letters and letters as necessary as arms. Sancho's response echoes the Christian morality of Erasmian humanists. It's enough for me to keep the Christus in my memory for me to be a good governor. Quixotic mission. Which of the following does the Duke not advise Sancho to do regarding how to be a prince? A. He should learn to hunt. B. He should learn to dress well. C. He should learn to read. Correct answer. C. He should learn to read. At this point, for the second time, Don Quixote takes Sancho in private into a chamber, now in order to give him princely advice. As in chapter 11 of part one, the Hidalgo forces Sancho to sit next to him. We note two things here. First, Don Quixote is envious. Against the law of reasonable outcomes, you find yourself granted your desires. In the blink of an eye, you find yourself governor of an isle as if it were of no consequence. Second, Don Quixote sees hubris or arrogance as Sancho's principal problem. I say all of this, O oh Sancho, so that you will not attribute the mercy done to you to your own merits. Finally, he formulates his advice in terms of seamanship, a metaphor which we saw throughout part one, especially in the captive's tale. Heed, O oh son of mine, this your Cato, who wishes to counsel you and to be your North Star and your guide, pointing your way and leading you to a safe port on this stormy sea onto which you are about to set sail. Offices and political appointments are nothing but a deep sea of confusions. 
That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating text. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza. Thank you.